Hi everyone, today I want to talk about the profession of being a neuropsychologist. I'm Carmen, I'm a clinical psychologist and an educator. Yesterday I had a very nice experience where an undergrad psychology student basically interviewed me <laughs> and she had some excellent questions and uh, after our meeting she emailed me with some very kind words and also asking some additional questions and I thought about making a video to answer these questions not only for her but for other people who may have similar interests okay I have my cell phone with me and I'm reading the questions that she emailed me so I give her full credit for coming up with these excellent questions so she asked could you describe a typical day or week of someone in the profession of neuropsychology most neuropsychologists practice in an office environment they will have staff who manage the referral sources and also scheduling patients that are interested in being evaluated. So what that means is that a neuropsychologist would know days in advance that a patient is scheduled on their books. Prior to the appointment of that patient, the neuropsychologist has to review all the pertinent medical information that is available and prepare the neuropsychological battery that is most fit for the client. Some neuropsychologists practice using a fixed battery while others use a flexible battery, but that is material for a very different conversation. So I won't explain that in detail right here. On the day of the appointment, the neuropsychologist may arrive to the office at nine o'clock at about the same time that the client patient may be scheduled and they will meet for an interview to gather more information about the medical history of that patient. The interview may last about one hour, an hour and a half. It could be that it lasts a little bit longer. The length of the interview will depend on a number of different things. It will depend on the extent of the known medical history of that patient. It will depend on the severity of the problem. It may depend on the number of contributing factors. There may be more than one thing that are contributing to the client's symptomatology. So the length of the interview will vary. After that, the neuropsychologist may do one of two things. Either they may administer the neuropsychological battery, that is a test that will assess different cognitive domains like attention and memory, or they may have a psychometrician who does the actual testing. It can be one of those. I prefer to do all my testing myself. And then after that, either the psychometrician or the neuropsychologist will score all the tests and standardize the scores, you know, look at the normative data in the, in the manuals related to each of the tests. And the neuropsychologist will write a report where he or she will integrate all the history of the client, all the symptoms, all the medical history gathered from medical records, neuropsychological records from previous visits, perhaps neuroimaging information. Um, it's maybe sometimes there's a person who's corroborating information like the spouse of the client. So all of that information will be integrated in, in a report that would not only summarize what are the findings in terms of strengths and weakness for that patient, and will also have a list of recommendations. The recommendations will be in line to support the best health of the client. So what that means is that a neuropsychologist who's doing her own assessment, she may spend one entire day interviewing and administering tests to her patient, and then one or two more days integrating and writing that report. How long a person takes to do a report, it really depends on a number of factors. If I am evaluating a person who is relatively healthy and I complete the interview pretty fast, then my writing of findings in terms of the history is also going to be brief. And if the client was relatively healthy, in terms of their cognition, then the results are going to be also very straightforward and will not need a lot of detail. For me, if I'm writing a report of a person who's exhibiting problems, I will go into more detail uh, about the characteristics of the problems the client is exhibiting as opposed to describing the characteristics of the normal behavior. Right? 
there's really no need to describe the characteristics of normal behavior where in terms of the problems that might be a lot of more interesting in terms of uh, giving a good clinical picture so in that sense trying to answer this question one day one typical day could be just spent entirely seeing a client and the second typical day could be entirely reviewing medical records and writing a report once a report is written we want to meet back with that client and maybe their spouse or another person who is supporting them to explain our findings and explain our recommendations and also answer all of their questions so again day three the typical third day could be meeting with patients and providing feedback. So as you can see, there's no one typical day. There's a lot of different activities that neuropsychologists do. And some of these activities may require more or less time. You can do a testing that takes eight hours or you can do a feedback meeting with a patient that takes 30 minutes or one hour. So the amount of time that these activities require are very different. That would also make a difference on what the neuropsychologist is doing from day to day. But that's an excellent question. How is your time divided between working with people, data, and additional tasks? In terms of the job of the neuropsychologist, if they are not doing anything else other than being clinicians, I would say that half of the time is gonna be spent with people and half of the time is gonna be spent in other tasks. So let me explain this. Spending time with other people, it doesn't necessarily mean only the patient. It may be with a patient's spouse or with the patient. If, if I'm working with children, it would be the, the patient's parents, but also it could be on the phone talking to other people, maybe talking to the teachers of a child that they are assessing or maybe talking to the neurologist of a patient that they are assessing. They also spend time in clinical meetings. There are different kinds of clinical meetings, but the one that would be more relevant to the neuropsychologist will be a clinical team meeting where cases are discussed and ideas about what is happening with different patients may be shared among clinicians. In that way, there is a lot more people thinking about a case and a lot more people coming out with solutions. These are very common meetings for psychologists. And in terms of other tasks, like I explained uh, before, it could be scoring, standardizing, writing reports, looking at neuroimaging, test results, and um, yeah, other things. What are the toughest decisions and problems you must handle in the field of neuropsychology? The most difficult part of the job of the neuropsychologist is having to meet with our patients and sharing information of unfavorable test results, especially when they lead to diagnosis that in some cases they have no treatment. We can make recommendations to improve the patient's quality of life, but there may be some diagnoses that really are untreatable and that the symptoms are only gonna worsen and cause more problems. So that can be very hard. But our job is to instill hope and to motivate that patient to take good care of themselves so that if symptoms are inevitable, at least they can delay them for as long as possible. How good would you say future career opportunities are within the field? Do you foresee any big changes or developments occurring in the future within your field? I personally think that our field continues to grow there's a wide acceptance about the value of neuropsychological evaluations and neuropsychological assessment is used in a variety of different settings, not just with people who have symptoms or having problems or had some sort of brain injury, but we also do them for educational purposes. We, we do neuropsychological assessments to evaluate the adequate cognitive health of people who have sensitive jobs. We use them with people who are just aging to monitor any changes in cognition. And the purpose of that is to ensure 
quickly and timely treatment. I see neuropsychology as a, as a career with a lot of potential. It's very interesting. We're always learning new things, not only because of the advances in neuropsychology, but also because of advances in other related fields like neuroscience, neurology, cardiology, and other fields. For me personally, I see a lot of positives in the career of neuropsychologists. And I see a lot of positives for people who are training to become neuropsychologists in the future. If you have any questions, comment below and thank you for watching.